There, I'm Thomas Michaud from Real Guitar Success. Welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to play a 12 bar blues on the acoustic guitar and we're going to add some embellishments. This will be fun. Let's do it. First let me review the basic structure of a 12 bar blues. Now I have gone over that in another lesson. We're going to do this in the key of E and I'll keep this fairly short. We're going to do one bar of E and each strum right now represents one bar. One bar of A7, and then two bars of E. That's four bars. Now I'm going to go into two bars of A7, and then two bars of E. That makes eight bars. Now the final four bars are what I call a turnaround pattern. It kind of turns around to get you back into the beginning of the tune. It's B7, one bar of A7, back to E7, and then B7, and that sounds like it wants to start over. Let's go ahead and try that once through together using a simple shuffle strum. Now you can either do a very basic strum that's down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. If this rhythm's new to you, one way you can kind of get it is to say triple, triple, triple. That was a trick I was taught by a professor once years ago. Now, if you're ready, you can add a mute to this to make it sound even more cooler. That would be down, up, mute, up, down, up, mute. Up. And what I'm doing is palming. I'm palming on the string as I mute down with the pick. So it's down, up, and then I mute and strike the strings, and then up. I do have another lesson on that mute strum also, which can help you if you want to work on that some more. So with the fancier strum, it'd be down, up, mute. And that would be one bar right there. Now let's play through the whole thing one time using the strum that's best for you right now. I'll count it out. Here we go. One, two, three, four, E7. Back to E7. That's bar three, and here's bar four. Now to A7, bar five. And back to E7. One more bar, this makes eight. Now the turnaround pattern, nine, B7. A7. 10, E7, 11, and B7, 12. Congratulations, that's your standard 12 bar blues pattern. Now we're gonna spice it up a little bit. Let's add some other versions of the seventh chords to give it a little movement, a little variety. So for example, this is your E7, a nice simple E7. You can also make a little more elaborate E7 by putting the pinky down on the second string third fret. What I should say is that the seventh sound is more obvious. That's because that seventh note is higher in the strings and kind of sticks in your ear more. It's easier to hear. So hear that? That's a seven. So now you have the E7 with your first finger and your second finger. And the second E7 is with your pinky on the third fret of the second string. And we'll do the same thing with an A7. You can play your regular A7 like this, fairly simple form, but you can make a little more elaborate A7 by putting your pinky down on the first string third fret. And again, the issue is that it makes the seventh note higher in pitch, so it sticks out more. So we're gonna do something like this now, alternating between the simple form and the, the more seventh beat form. <laughs> to give it a little motion. So now the new pattern will be E7, A7, E7, and then E7 version two, then A7, A7 version two, then E7, E7 version two. Let's try that one time through, and then we're gonna add a little bit more. Here we go. One, two, ready, E7. One, two, three, four, to A7. And back to E7. Get ready, pinky down. A7. And pinky down, version two. Back to E7. Pinky down. B7. A7. 
Put the pinky down. Ah, you like that? A B seven. Pinky down. And B seven. Okay, now let's add another embellishment. One way to make blues sound a little more interesting is to add what we call substitute chords. An obvious one here is when we're doing that turnaround pattern. Remember, it's B7 to A7 to E7 to B7. That's the very end, the last four bars. Well, now instead of going to A7, we're going to substitute a C7 in an interesting form. You're just going to take that B7 and slide up one fret and then back down to B7. Listen to what it sounds like. It's kind of cool. So we'll start with a B7. That's bar nine. Then the C7 and back to B7. E7. And then a B7. So how about we try just those last four bars together? We'll start on the B7. So it'll be B7. Normally it would go to A7, but we're going to go B7, slide up to E7, then back down to B7, and then go to E7, end on B7. Let's do it. One, two, B7, go. One bar. Half a bar, C, and back to B7, E7. One full bar, and B7. Now, another way to make it sound really cool is to add an intro lick and maybe an outro lick as well. I'm not going to teach that intro lick here because I've done that in a separate lesson, but I'm going to add it so you can see how it fits with the whole pattern. The intro lick is going to sound like this. If you already know this intro lick, play along with me. And if not, wait till I get to the E7 and then join in. Here we go. One, two, ready, hit it. Get ready with the pinky, here we go, down. A7. And the pinky, down. Back to E7. Pinky, now. B7, turn around. Moving up, here we go, half step. And back down. That was fun. Thanks for hanging out for this whole lesson. Hey, if you found this a little over the top for you, check out my Real Guitar Success website. I'm offering a 14-day free trial, and I'd love to have you there. See you soon.